I want everybody to come to the conference, basically. You don't have to be in the Labour Party or the trade unions or the Greens or Liberals or anything. You just actually have to have a commitment to London, want to know what we can do to make it better, want to take part in setting the agenda um, for this coming decade that will give us a city that functions and gives all its citizens an opportunity. And the problem we've got with the right is that whereas 30 years ago, even under Thatcher, there was a chunk of sort of liberal-minded Tories who probably took the view they, they wanted to screw the working class, but not so badly that they'd rebel. I mean, that has really just died out as a trend. I mean, Ken Clark's like this sort of preserved old dinosaur, the Natural History Museum. I mean, if there's a Tory government, the influx of people that are coming are all really to the right of Thatcher. I think Thatcher was a bit soft, um, virulently anti-Europe, virulently xenophobic, and also quite committed to a real shift of wealth and power um, towards the very richest in society. And this is all hidden behind you know, touchy-feely Cameron. But when you look at the way he sort of skews the arguments, um, I think you don't need much doubt to know that behind that touchy-feely face he's as hard as the others. I mean, he's just Osborne with a bit of personality. I think the Tories really have changed over my lifetime. I've seen them move from this sort of concept of a one-nation society. I can remember the 1970 general election, the Tories promising to build more council houses than we did. Um, and that has been squeezed out. What you're left with is hard-line economic fundamentalists who just believe that I mean, the market should be left unfettered and unconstrained. Except, of course, when they can skew the system with insider trading and other um, similar scams to benefit themselves. I think what I want to hear from politicians between now and the election is that they understand the scale of the problems we face in terms of economic reconstruction and in terms of tackling our environmental problems. And the two of these policies come together. There's a huge amount of work to be created if we're to really preserve our environment and make it um, certain that humanity can survive at the end of this century. The second thing I see, I, I want a change in the way they work, particularly under New Labour where everything's been sucked to the centre and then at the centre sucked up to, to Downing Street. What we should be committing ourselves to is real devolution, not just to the regional assemblies and, and London, uh, but to local government. In a lot of other countries like America or Germany, half the spending of the state is done at the local level and it allows for diversity and innovation on a grand scale. And then the third thing I want to hear from politicians is firmly setting themselves for a new world order. We've moved from that sort of post-Cold War period of total American predominance, ending up with the spasm of George Bush and the mad neocons um, trying to sort of impose their will all over the Middle East and um, sink anything that wasn't immediately in America's interest. I want to see British politicians recognising that in the next, by the end of the next decade, I mean by as early as 2020, we could see China as the largest economy on earth. Brazil's just become the 10th largest economy. India will eventually be the second largest economy. We are moving into a genuinely multipolar world, and for the first time since Christopher Columbus, a world not dominated um, by Europe and its American offspring. We've got to move into a world where different cultures are accepted as equally valid. If you want to understand what a Cameron government do, just look at Boris Johnson in London. I mean, we had a leading environmental team working with great cities around the west of the world, 45 staff, only three remain. I mean, Boris only got rid of a couple, the rest, the rest of them left because there was nothing to do. I mean, so there's no environmental agenda they really believe in. And then if you look at the, the approach to issues about the economy and the welfare state, Boris has had a, a fair increase um, on the buses, which has been devastating, a painful increase on the tube. Whilst saying, oh, I've frozen the council tax. Well, the freezing the council tax saved the average family £7 a year. I mean, the fare increase on the buses has cost the average um, London family £250 to £300 a year. And so it's been a real redistribution of wealth to the better off. And that's what we'll get from Cameron and Osborne.